Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before I get into it with our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We have Emery Smith on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Texas, the Lone Star State, here to talk with us about her health and fitness journey. She's only 20 years old, everyone, so good God, making me feel old and ancient. But she's on here, again, like I said, to really... Tell us about her journey and how she got started, and I think it's a really inspiring one. And first of all, everyone, go and give her a, a follow on her Instagram page. I'll leave a link down below. But before we get into everything, Emery, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, I got to ask first of all, even though I pain to do it, what is the weather like in Texas today? Um. Okay, well, I think today was a high of 82, which is pretty brisk fall weather. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's like 40 degrees here, and we still have snow on the ground. I've I've told the story a hundred times, so I don't think the audience wants to hear it. But yeah, I mean, it's it is just absolutely ridiculous here. But before we get into that, because I mean, I hate depressing the audience first off. But why don't you give us your backstory on what really inspired and motivated you to get in shape, and how that led to where you're at right now in your journey? Yeah, so I grew up playing sports. I've honestly played everything out there. I've done track, volleyball, cheerleading, swimming, tennis, rowing, um, you name it. So I have been in and out of the weight room since probably eighth grade at the earliest. I was, mm, how old are you in eighth grade? Like 13? I, yeah, yeah, around there then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was probably 14 first time I stepped in the weight room. Um, and I was in and out of the weight room in high school. Um, but then my family moved to South Carolina when I was 15. I was born and raised in Virginia. So we moved to South Carolina when I was 15 and I went out for the volleyball team. And the high school that I was going to was huge comparatively to the one that I came from in Virginia. So I played volleyball my freshman year in Virginia at a really, really small high school. So then I wanted to play at the new high school in South Carolina, which was much larger. So I actually didn't make the volleyball team and I was super bummed because I was like, shoot, I've always played sports. I don't know what I'm going to do with my free time now. And so my dad came home one day and he was like, uh, Hey Emery, like I saw a poster for a local rowing club. You should try it out. Like you have the physique for it, give it a shot, see how it goes, that kind of thing. So I tried it out when I was a sophomore in high school, I was 16 and I it turns out it was, I was pretty good at it. I learned really fast. Um, and so then I, I really found the weight room when I was a junior in high school. I wanted to get bigger, faster, stronger to get recruited by the top schools in the nation for rowing. Um, and I really just fell in love with lifting weights. I loved the idea of I'm in control of changing and altering my body um, if I don't like a certain part of me like I can change that and I was just so enthralled and enamored by the fact that I could do that and I was in control and just the mental fortitude that came with it um I felt like my confidence was increased and just I was learning so many lessons about myself in the gym that were applicable to every other facet of life as well which was super cool so then I committed to the University of Texas at Austin for rowing, which is second in the nation. Um, so I was very blessed with that opportunity to row at UT um, with Olympians on my team, <laughs> which was incredible. So I rowed my freshman year of college and I kind of had to put bodybuilding on the back burner. Um, I knew that I would want to compete after I rode in college if I decided to stick with it all four years or I would just use it as a tool to get in and then decide to retire, <laughs> if you will. So I rode my freshman year and then I gave it up. I just couldn't juggle at all. It was kind of a negative environment for me to be in. I wasn't thriving, honestly. Um, my grades weren't where they wanted, where I wanted them to be. My, I couldn't juggle my social life. I was still trying to do the whole bodybuilding thing on the side and it just wasn't working. My body was, we were working out twice a day, seven days a week with the rowing team. Um, so my body had no time to recover. And even on Sundays, our rest day, they, the coaches would encourage us to get active recovery. And, and that's when I would like lift heavy and do the whole bodybuilding thing. And so I, my body had no recovery for 
more than a year at this point. And my immune system was suppressed because I wasn't recovering and I was sick my whole freshman year. It was just not a good time. So I knew something had to change and I had to sit down with myself and explore my options. And I just decided that I needed to give up something on my plate because I was extremely spread thin and wasn't thriving. So I gave up rowing and honestly, it was such a good decision. I am very happy with that choice. So my sophomore year, I decided to fully pursue bodybuilding. I knew that this was what I'm extremely passionate about. I'm blessed to live in Austin, which is a huge fitness hub. And at this point, I had started to go to a gym where a bunch of very, very successful people in the fitness industry were going as well. So I began to network and get to know them more and more. And I started working with a coach in February of 2020, Justin Mahaley. Um, he is incredible. I knew that I wanted to work with him. He's one of the best in the world at what he does. And he's primarily an online coach, but I'm blessed to have him live in Austin as well. So we became friends and I hired him as a coach this February. So we've been working together for about eight months now. And man, the growth, the physical and the mental and emotional and spiritual growth that has come from it. Um, and just, I've learned so much about myself. I was self-taught before I hired him. And I feel like I made a lot of growth myself, but I had kind of hit a plateau and I was like, okay, now's a good time. If I'm going to compete, I just don't know enough about like metabolism and prepping and peak week and all that, the nitty gritty details. So I decided to hire him on and it's been such a great journey so far. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at and we're looking at maybe competing in 2021, but also not rushing anything as well because I am young. I'm only 20, 20 years old um, and the stage isn't going to go anywhere. So uh, we're just trusting the process. And, yeah. Enjoy being 20 as much as you can. Go out every single night, party every single night. Screw the No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I'm 26 as everyone knows and you know, I would I would give one of my fingers, probably preferably a pinky probably if I could go back to just being 20 for for a, a give another shot at it. But before we get into the bodybuilding, I mean, rowing has always been a sport that's really fascinated me because like I told you before we started recording, I had two friends that did it in college who didn't really tr do any sports in high school, but they really found it. They really enjoyed it. But I mean, being a baseball player and being recruited like I was, you know, I mean, there are very, a lot of variables that you can get recruited from, obviously like how fast you throw, how good your pitches are, what your stats are like, but for rowing, it seems like it's got to be one of those sports where it's like, Oh, how fast does she row? I mean, does she keep the pace with everyone? But what exactly goes into recruiting for rowing? Because I think that's just such a sport that not that many people are familiar with. So it, it might be hard for the general person to just be able to decipher, you know, like who's better than who at rowing really. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know anything about rowing, and I have to explain it as, like, the long skinny boats that are in the Olympics, and then they're like, oh, yeah, like, I might have seen that once or twice, but it's a very obscure sport, um, and essentially what you do is you create, like, a be recruited or a max preps profile where you can post, like, scores from regattas, which are races. Um, you can post, like, your placings and your times along with that, but primarily, like, a 2000 meter erg score test. So you sit on the rowing machine and you row 2000 meters as fast as possible. And that number is basically what you're judged on and recruited on. Um, it's like submitting an SAT score, um, as y'all are familiar, more familiar with. So I compare it to an SAT score. You submit your 2K score and that's how they gauge like how fast you are, how strong you are. Um, and it's one, it's the hardest thing you can do in rowing. And that's what I did. I made a max preps or I think it was be recruited actually, but I would just post pictures of myself in the gym because my club team that I was involved in in high school was very, very small. Um, it was not competitive at all. I was the only one that was really serious about it, honestly. And I, cause I was just like, okay, I'm going to use this as a tool, get really good at a weird sport that no one does. Um, and so I didn't have great numbers to provide to coaches and universities. So my dad would go with me to the gym and just take pictures of me at 16 years old, 
flexing and whatnot and looking back like I was so small and frail but it's cool to see how far I've come but I would post those pictures and coaches can reach out and contact you from there and like I said I didn't have the ERG scores um that the universities were looking for but I had the physique and they could see that I had the potential and I'm 5'11 and so that's kind of why I Good. Well, hopefully people knew that that was your dad in there because they hopefully they weren't saying who's this guy taking photos, of this little girl in, in, in the gym here. But no, no, that's that's hilarious. But I mean, I, I told her the story before, but I'll share it again for everyone of when I was in high school, there was a rowing machine in our gym. And I would I, I love to do that just because as everyone knows, because I mentioned it, you know, basically every third or fourth podcast that, you know, my back is one thing that is the best thing for me. And on top of, you know, working in warehouses all throughout college where you basically had to, you know, load trucks and do all that type of stuff where you got a nice back, you quit. I mean, I rode a lot. And so, but one time in high school, I rode so hard that when I was pulling it back, I pulled it back so hard that the front part went up and then it slammed down again. And then they had to bring a guy in to fix it. And, you know, we thought, I, I thought I might have to uh, get charged some money for it, but it, it turned out to not be, you know, so such a bad thing. But for anyone out there, I mean, who's looking for a nice way to work out. Those rowing workouts are, oh my God. I mean, they're, they're going to make you sweat and they're really going to make you make you really question yourself for for a few times there but i mean there are so many good things that can do can be done from that so next time you see one in the gym make sure that you at least go over and give it a try but you did say y'all when you were talking to us and anyone that's from the south that says y'all and was that something that you picked up when you went to texas or in west virginia and south carolina do they use y'all as well but or is that something that you developed um so i was actually raised in virginia oh virginia not west virginia yeah no i've been saying y'all since i was Okay. Since I began talking. <laughs> I was going to say, I only asked that because I have a friend who in high school, now she moved to Tennessee and she comes back and says, y'all, and we just give her so much crap for it. We're like, oh, y'all. And, I'll, and then we use our Southern accents and just kind of taunt her, but she she likes it and stuff. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's one thing. So the moment you said that, I was like, oh, is that something that she picked up or that she always, that she always said? It, 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 yeah, for us people from the North, whenever we hear that, it kind of just takes a little thing. Where we're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's something that they, something that they say. But yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's just great. But one thing that I haven't asked really anyone in the, on this podcast yet, and I was literally just thinking about it when before we started recording, is what about bodybuilding really appealed to you and really made you interested in it? What was one aspect about the sport that you looked at it and you really said like, oh, hey, this is something that I really think I'd be good at and I'd enjoy? Yeah, so I knew that being tall in the sport isn't ideal, and I just really wanted to see how far I can push my body and see what my potential is. Um, and I really love the fact that it's a 24 seven sport. It's not just like rowing where you have practice from four to 6 PM and then you go home and you're like a normal student. Um, I love the fact that it's like all encompassing and it's constantly on my mind. Like when I go to sleep, I run through like, when am I going to eat? When am I going to work out? It's just, it absorbs my thoughts. And I love that. Um, and I just really feel that, I have the passion to do what it takes to be good and successful in this industry and you can't fake passion. So I really pride myself in that and I'm really, really excited to see uh, myself climb the ladder within this industry. Yeah, no. And, and that's just a great attitude to have. And I really think for a lot of people, just what, what appeals to them is also the structure too, but that can also be a double-edged sword for so many people because I mean, with this structured lifestyle comes a lot of things that you might have to sacrifice, whether it comes to, you know, your social life or just a lot of free time, because once you get into this life and I mean, really into it, I mean, you have to be so specific and so scientific with your meal plans. I mean, when you eat, when you work out, I mean, everything just becomes so down pat and especially being in college where, I mean, the temptations are vast. How have you dealt with this mentally, this change that you've had? Because so many people focus on the physical change. If you were to walk into a room, they say, oh, Emery, you look so much better. I mean, you look like you've really, you know, been working hard, but they don't realize the mental aspect is, you know, 10 times as hard as the physical aspect. How have you been dealing with that? Yeah. So when I was first transitioning from rowing my freshman year of college to fully pursuing bodybuilding, it was really tough. Um, just I'm in a sorority at UT. And I love going out and being around other people, huge people person. So being constantly surrounded by temptations was difficult at first. And I was more so like one foot in, one foot out type of deal. Like I would go out some, um, but now I feel like I'm very, like I am on a strict path. While 
I don't want strict to have a negative connotation, though. Um, it's more of like a dedicated path. A dedicated path, for sure, for sure. And my friends that like aren't around me all the time, they may look at me and think that I'm restrictive and obsessed. But my roommates that live with me and see like all of my actions um, compile into like why I'm doing what I'm doing and just like the behind the scenes, essentially, they understand um, more so than the friends that only see me bring like my Tupperware to dinner out with them or drinking water at a bar, um, just opting out of certain things. It's definitely been a hard transition, but I remind myself of my goals and I allow myself to have fun and I can match anyone's energy. So I pride myself in that as well. Um, it is hard, but I've also learned that I can have fun no matter what situation I'm placed in. Um, and I just really have huge goals and I'm willing to do what it takes and make sacrifices to get there. So. And that is honestly something that I think is lacking in a lot of people in our generation. Well, I shouldn't even say our generation because I'm I'm considered a millennial still because I'm like the last one. And you're like my little brother where you're a Gen Z. So, yeah, it's it's like a lot of young people, I should say. A lot of young people have. But I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. Everyone, when you're at a bar, if you're if you're like her or me when you were in college and you're really focused on being healthy and fit, but you, you like to go out and socialize because, let's be honest, almost everyone does, go up to the bartender and tell them that you're the designated driver and you will – most likely get at least one or two free sodas or waters or whatever you want just because that's something that they kind of like to do but that's a little hack out there for you for anyone out there who's looking to you know at, feel at least, for you. yeah yeah don't yeah yeah make them feel bad for you just be like yeah i'm gonna you know have to sleep out in the shed you know if i don't come home with you know with all these people alive so you know but anyway that's that's just a little, a little hack for you but one thing that I you somewhat brought up when you're talking about your friend's reaction to this lifestyle, and it, it goes into the probably the number one myth that I love to bust on this podcast, and it's gotten better the last five years due to Instagram, but there are still so many women who have that fear that if they walk into the gym and they pick up one weight, they're going to put on, you know, 50 pounds of muscle overnight, and, you know, first of all, give me that self-confidence, and second of all, you know, I would spend my entire life savings just to train with you, just because you have found the secret that, I mean, so many people are looking for, but did you ever have that fear when you were getting started, and even if you didn't, I mean, I bet, I mean, if you had a nickel for every time you heard that, you would probably not even be in college anymore, you'd just be able to, you know, live in a mansion, basically. <laughs> right, so I don't know if I specifically had this fear of getting too bulky, per se, because as I mentioned earlier, I was wanting to put on size and mass to get stronger for rowing. Um, so I don't think it was a fear of mine, but I've definitely had friends that came to me wanting to get toned um, and not put on too much muscle for fear of getting bulky. I honestly like have to bite my tongue and hold back my laugh because I'm like, you think that I look like this from like one week in the gym or one day in the gym? Um, and I have friends come that come to me like looking for quick fixes and I'm like, honey, it does not work like that. I wish it did. Um, but it's just such a common misconception within fitness. And I just hope girls realize and guys realize that you're not going to get bulky from picking up small weights a few times a week. Um, it takes years and years in the gym and decisions outside of the gym that all compile to becoming a bodybuilder and if that's not your goal then you're totally fine it's hard to become a bodybuilder <laughs> oh my god and i i always used to sometimes mess with them where they'd be like oh hey do you work out and i'd be like no i just look like this naturally never touched a weight my entire life like as i'm chugging a protein shake really in front of them but no yeah there are just so many myths when it comes to that but yeah, that's another big one where it's like if they could get the word toned erased from the dictionary first of all because when you're saying tone you're saying muscle but it's just a way of saying it where it's, yeah, I, I mean, I could go into a 10-hour a tangent with that thing. But, you know, it, that also brings me into one thing that I think impacts women specifically much more than it does men. Where it, I mean, it impacts guys too, but women, I think it has such a bigger impact is that confidence boost that working out gives you. Where, I mean, we have heard hundreds of stories on this podcast of women who have, you know, been able to like make life-changing decisions. And, you know, it's helped them either become more assertive or just help them better their everyday life. And I always say that that's the one thing that you can take from the gym and use to impact your life in a positive way. How have you personally taken this confidence boost that working out's given you and used it to impact your life in a positive way? Yeah. So growing up, I was always super tall and lean, kind of lanky. And I just like, wasn't very happy with my physique. 
And so ever since I stepped foot in the gym, the confidence has just been incredible. Um, I feel incredibly empowered and confident in the gym. And I love that it like overflows into other areas of my life as well. Um, I'm a natural born leader, but sometimes I used to question what I was doing. Um, and now I am very confident and stand firm in my decisions and my choices. I know exactly who I am. Um, I'm a very like take it or leave it kind of person because I am confident and I know exactly who I am. And I think I can attribute that a lot to the gym. And I'm very thankful for that. And I mean, that's, that's one thing too, where if only people could realize that who are thinking about getting in shape, but then like, like I've said before, they're afraid of, you know, like getting too big. If only they could just realize that, you know, that confidence boost is going to be probably the biggest thing that's going to come out of all of this. I mean, I've had some of the most in shape people on the planet on, and they still, you know, if, if you don't go into it with a right mindset, they still told me, it's like, I still don't feel great. You know, it, it's just, but it, this, that confidence boost, if you're willing to make that change and, you know, adjust that thing, that thinking mentally, I mean, it can really, you know, be life-saving for so many people and it can just, you know, turn you into a whole different person. But before we get into that, because again, I mean, we're just going on tangent city here. I mean, we could literally have a 20 hour podcast if we wanted to, because we're both very talkative people, which is what I love because I've had guests come on where I'm just like, I say, you know, 90% of it and then they have other ones, but then I've had one where, so here's, here's a side tangent that is actually necessary. So my record, when I asked that first question of what, tell me your backstory and really what got you into shape. 28 minutes later, it was over with. Whoa. <laughs> yours, yours was five, which is a good one, but hers was 28 minutes where I literally, I mean, I could have done so many things. I could have showered, you know, I could have, you know, got some dinner ready basically while she was talking, but it was a sight to see. I can send you the link to it because it is one of those things where you're just like, how is she still talking or how does she still have breath in her mouth? But yeah, that is, that is definitely, so that's my tangent little right there because you know, it's, it, I mean, when, when you do this podcast so many times, whenever something like that happens, you're like, okay, this is something that I'm going to remember because it's just so out there. But I love to talk genetics on this podcast because so many people in this day and age that are on social media, I mean, I hear it all the time. I want to have her arms. I want to have his abs. I want to have their back. People don't realize that you can only be the best version of themselves. And, you know, you don't know how that person got to the look that they have. You know, you don't know the amount of training that they've done, you know, all the other things that go into this. But Whenever someone first gets started working out, they always have that one body part that really, really takes off that they don't have to train as much. And they always have that one body part that just legs behind that they have to train to oblivion to get it to catch up. What were those body parts for you when you were getting started? Yeah, so two prominent muscle groups that grew pretty rapidly for me, I would say, is my back and my delts. Um, a lot of females in particular have a hard time feeling the mind-muscle connection in their lats. And I have a bunch of people reach out to me because my back is fairly developed comparatively um they're they reach out asking like how I feel my lats while I'm working out and because I do have a background in rowing um that just has transferred over into the weight room as well um and I feel like my back has blown up so and it's also one of my favorite body parts to train um another group is the delts I freaking love training delts they're one of my favorites as well um and they have grown very quickly as well um and then one that definitely lags because i am 5'11 i have a much larger frame to fill out my femurs are extremely long and so i'm honestly just falling in love with the process of training putting my head down doing the dirty work um and i've just recently found exercises that are finally making me grow um and i'm just lifting heavier each week progressively overloading and I'm seeing a lot of growth and I'm excited about that. So, well, and this is the million dollar question because as someone that struggles with their legs and their lower body, like me, what have you found that's really helped you when it comes to the leg area? Because I am willing to, you know, take any advice right now at this point in my life. Yeah. So I'm finally just learning like how to take my sets to true failure, mechanical failure and tap into like those last few reps. And instead of saving reps in the tank, um, I'm really just leaving it all out there and I leave each leg session knowing that I didn't have anything left in me, which I love. Um, but I don't do anything spinal loaded anymore because I was having a lot of lower back pain, um, from rowing that's transferred over into the weight room. So I used to do barbell squats and deadlifts and all of the heavy compounds like that. Um, but I've transferred over to doing primarily hack squats as my main leg staple. 
then just progressively overloading that each week and hitting failure each set. And my legs have really started to blow up. So hack squats, that's where it's at. Hey, I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and give that a try because yeah, like I said, for me, it's, you know, anything right now, basically to, to do with when it comes to changing the legs. But one thing that isn't talked about really as much as it should is the nutrition aspect because, I mean, so many people don't understand that, you know, like the saying goes, abs remain in the kitchen, you know. It's just an ever-evolving cycle, too, when it comes to your nutrition. You always kind of have to learn to mix things up every once in a while. But what were some of the bigger nutritional changes that you think that you had to make when you really got started in, you know, taking things seriously in the gym? Yeah, so I've always been very healthy and loved, like, fruits and vegetables growing up. So. I've always kind of eaten healthy, but in college, I had a nutritionist my freshman year that worked alongside of the rowing team, and so my love for nutrition kind of sparked there because I would meet with her, um, because I was tracking my macros in the dining hall, doing the best I could, because I was trying to do the whole bodybuilding thing on the side of rowing, so I was tracking my macros in the dining hall, which probably wasn't very accurate at all, because I didn't know the nutritional values of the foods, but I tried. Um... So after rowing, I didn't live in a dorm anymore because I moved out of my freshman year dorm and I had a kitchen. And so that's when I really started to learn like how to make like a full meal, carbs, proteins, fats, all the good stuff. Um, And just strictly eating whole foods as best as I could. Um, I was cooking everything that I was eating. So I knew exactly where it came from and how it was made, what was in it that whole thing, um, and just really finding foods that work well for me, digest well, um, and fuel my body properly. Um, but I love nutrition. It's definitely my wheelhouse. I read about it in my free time. And I thought about switching my major from, I'm currently in kinesiology, um, and I wanted to switch into nutrition, but it was a little late. So I feel like that's what I'm truly passionate about within the fitness industry. So I might end up going to grad school and getting my registered dietitian license um, because it's just so fascinating to me and I love food. (laughs) So, yeah. And again, you know, there's nothing better than I think really following your passions and doing all that. So yeah, I I think that's, that's great. But I mean, also when it comes to this nutrition aspect, I mean, there are so many myths that I think need to be busted. And one of them, you know, is that There's so many different diets and especially in this day and age where it seems like a new diet is invented every single day or there's at least probably more than one. But how have you dealt with all that sort of being able to manage all of those, you know, trends that are popping up wherever you go and just realizing that, you know, like, hey, I need to stick with one that I, you know, am tried and true when, you know, there's so many commercials, there's so many advertisements on social media of like, oh, try this diet. I lost 15 pounds, yada, yada, yada. How have you been able to sort of mentally just focus in on and know what's right for you? Yeah, so, I don't know, I just honestly get the same things every day, every week, I switch it up a little bit here and there, Um, but at this point, I've been doing it long enough, so yeah, it's kind of down to an art by now. Yeah. No, and it it definitely is an art, and it's something that, you know, it takes a lot of time, so I've just honestly been just thinking about naming this podcast Trial and Error, because that's honestly what it is, but... One thing that is never talked about, because I talk about, I like to talk about things that aren't really talked about, but I have never seen one post on this on Instagram is the importance of sleep and sleep is the number one thing when it comes to recovery. It's the number one. It might be the number one thing overall. I mean, it's just for anyone that's doubting me on that. It's okay. Don't sleep at all tonight and then go to the gym the next day and see how good you do. Just, just tell me how good you do and just see, I, those are the only two times that I've ever quit from a workout or when I, the two nights that I spent all nighters in college and then I went to the gym the next day, I got about half my workout and I was like, yeah, I, I cannot do this. But I mean, sleep, especially in this day and age with all the technology out there and, and everything, it's hard for people to get that proper amount of sleep. What are some things that you like to do to try to get that proper amount of sleep? And what does a proper night's rest look like for you? Because I know it varies person to person, which is one thing that I think a lot of people struggle with when it comes to trying to find what works best for them is that, you know, some people, they can go six hours of sleep a day and they're good. And other people, you know, they got to get their like nine hours in. So what does that look like for you? Yeah, so... I agree. Like my freshman year of college, I was sleep deprived my entire year and I did not even realize it because I was waking up at 530 every morning for rowing practice. And some nights like Friday night, we would we would have the opportunity to like go to a frat party or something. And I'm like, okay, I have to wake up at 530. But also I'm only in college once. So I'm going to go out and just suffer the consequences. So 
I just was so groggy and exhausted my entire freshman year. And so that was one thing that I really changed after I gave up rowing was I'm going to start prioritizing my sleep. Um, and man, oh man, did that make so, so much difference just in my energy levels, my strength, everything changed. So something that I'm doing currently um, is I have a strict like regimen and nightly routine. So I make a cup of decaf coffee and I turn on my, or I light a candle in my room. I turn my lights off and I read um, for like 30 minutes or so just to kind of wind down. And it just signals my mind to wind down and say, okay, it's time to go to sleep, relax. Um, and I try and eliminate my cell phone use like 30 minutes or an hour before I'm going to bed because I don't want my mind to be stimulated too much. Um, but yeah, so I think just having like a similar nightly routine every single day will trigger your mind into saying, okay, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed and wind down now. So that's something that's really helped me. And also I'm not a huge reader, but I've really been loving it recently. Um, it makes me tired and I love reading like self-help books. So it's kind of a double whammy. So that's definitely a tip that I recommend trying if you're having a hard time, like winding down, going to sleep. No, and melatonin is always a good thing too as well. I have to plug that every time because that's one thing that has really helped me. Where So my first semester of college, I dropped a class because the class was at 10 a.m. and that was too early for me. Oh, no. Yeah. So I, well, and it works me well because I work nights now. So, you know, it's funny when some of my guests are like, yeah, I get up at like 4, 4 30. That's when I'm going to bed. So it's always fascinating with that, where, you know, it's a little bit harder to go to sleep when the sun's starting to come up. But yeah, it's just, it, it really is so different for so many people, which is another reason, like I always say, why I like to bring that up because, you know, if this could help just one other person and, you know, the vast amount of answers that I've had on here. I mean, I should make like a pie chart and a list of all the different categories of answers that I've had and just the frequency that they've come. But before we get it, before we finish up with bodybuilding, I mean, we have to talk about this because it's one thing that's, you know, impacted our lives in more ways than we could have ever imagined is the coronavirus. Because I mean, good God, it's really changed our lives. And especially being in college, I cannot imagine what that must be like being in college and having to deal with this. Luckily, my, my younger brother was graduating last spring and he was he just stayed at home the whole time. So it didn't affect him that bad. But when it came down to, you know, all this stuff that the coronavirus has, has done with, I mean, it's, it's really just changed everything. So what has this whole pandemic been like for you being that, I mean, you're in college now and, you know, it just seems like it would be a weird time to be in college. Yeah, for sure. So coronavirus hit I think I had spring break mid-March and then it was either the week immediately after or even during spring break that COVID hit so I planned to go home for spring break I was just gonna not go anywhere tropical I was just gonna go home to South Carolina because I'm a homebody and I love my family so I went home and then University of Texas ended up extending spring break so and it ended up being like for the rest of the semester. So I, I ended up staying home for about three months and I was going to stay there for six months through the summer, but I was already, I had an apartment in Austin and I wanted to get back to all of my bodybuilding friends. Um, so I came back in the summer, but during COVID while I was home in South Carolina, like all the gyms closed. So I scrambled and bought as much like used equipment that I could find. And it was just like bits and pieces. I had a barbell, no weights, um, maybe like two 10 pound dumbbells and some resistance bands and a kettlebell. It was super random, but I made it work while I could. Luckily I had a friend that was living in an apartment that kept their gym open. So I'd, I would have him sneak me in and I would have like up to 75 pound dumbbells and a Smith machine and a few cables. Um, so I kind of made do with what I had. I was blessed that I even had that small little apartment gym, um, but no gains were lost. Thank goodness. Um, but it really shows that like, if you want something bad enough, you will find a way to progress and reach your goals. So I think COVID was really eye-opening for a lot of people. It kind of made them reassess and realign if they needed to. Um, and so I came back to Austin because mainly things were starting to open back up here. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go spend the summer in Austin. It's back to normal there. And literally as soon as I came back, everything shut down again. The gyms closed, the bars closed because cases spiked. 
Um, it was like Texas and Arizona that were in the same boat here. They reopened things way earlier and then ended up shutting them back down again. So we regressed pretty hard there. And I was like, well, shoot, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do now. Um, then they like reopened the gyms and just had limited capacities and require you to wear masks and all that stuff. Um, but I found a gym in Austin that doesn't require masks because I was just suffocating and like they wouldn't, it was so strange. They wouldn't make you wear masks if you were doing cardio, but if you were lifting, you had to wear masks. And I was just like, okay, that doesn't add up, uh, not to get political or anything, but so I found a gym, I switched gyms and go to one that doesn't require masks now, um, which has been really nice. <laughs> but as far as school goes, it's pretty weird. Um, I have a few classes that are in person, some are hybrid, so it's like a mix of Zoom and some are in person, and then other classes are strictly online on Zoom, um, and so when I do go to campus for my in-person classes and labs, like, it's so desolate, and University of Texas has 50,000 undergrads, and which is massive, 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 and there's no one on campus right now. It is so strange, and like you said, I went to the football game yesterday and they have like cardboard cutouts of people and it's just so weird being in that stadium with it not packed and super loud and roaring. Um, so it's just kind of a weird time to be here, but also you can't close down nature and I feel like there are so many things to do still in Austin and there's a silver lining in everything. Um, so you just have to make the most of what you have and yeah. One thing that I think, you know, people can really take from this in a positive way, if there's anything that they can take from this pandemic is, I mean, you, I bet you hear this all the time when it comes to friends, you know, cause we've talked about, you know, like they come up and they ask you questions a lot. One thing that I bet you hear a lot is when people, Oh, I really want to get in shape, but I just don't have the time. I'm just so busy. I don't have the time. That is probably the number one excuse that I've heard on this podcast, you know, a million times, but with this pandemic, if you don't have any free time, I don't know what's going on in your life because that this is one thing where I think we have so much more free time. But if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Emery, I really want to get in shape and I really want to make this change. What are some things that I could do to get started? I mean, this is the best time to really do that because you, of all the free time that you have. But what advice would you like to give someone if they come, came up to you and they asked that? Because, I mean, let's be honest, everyone wants to get in better shape. I don't care what you say, any person, unless you're like Ryan Gosling or, you know, like Megan Fox or something like that, because then, you know, you, you've got it down. Okay. You don't have to do anything anymore for at least a couple, at least a while. But for us normal people that aren't, you know, blessed with the beauty of, you know, a God, basically, uh, you really do have to, you know, really, you know, buckle down. But one thing, everyone wants to get in shape, but they lack the knowledge on how to get in shape. That's the one thing that's really holding them behind. So what advice would you like to give someone if they were to come up to you and just say, hey, I really just want to get started, but I don't know what to do? Yeah, so I actually made a post about this very recently. And it was discussing how you're never going to be ready enough. Like that perfect opportunity is never going to come along. You're never going to be big enough, smart enough, wealthy enough, whatever it may be, fill in the blank, you're never going to be enough. Just start. Um, just take it upon yourself and say, yes, you have to believe in yourself. You have to just be willing to be scared um, and just be bold in that decision to go after what you want. Um, yes, there are a lot of unknowns and variables that you haven't mastered yet right at the beginning of any journey that you embark upon. But that's kind of the fun in it, and you it's a learning process. So the perfect opportunity is never going to come along. You just have to be willing to say yes and attack it head on. Um, yeah, just believe in yourself. Yeah, and that, I, I mean, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. And for anyone else out there, just start walking too. That's the easiest thing. I mean, if you have two, if you have two accessible legs that you can use, I mean, go to town on that. But the last couple of questions before we wrap things up here, I mean, one one training technique that I've you know I was familiar with a little bit in high school, but then I really got into it once I you know started this podcast and so many people recommended it is time under tension. Do you like to do a lot of time under tension in your training? I do. Yeah. So. As I mentioned earlier, hack squats have been a very, like a very prominent staple in my leg days recently. Okay, first of all, um, first of all, first of all, before you get into that, I tried a time under tension leg day once, never again, never again. I woke up, 
I woke up, took about four steps out of my bed, and then I just collapsed basically. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to move again. So if she preaches time under tension leg workouts, I am warning everyone, do it at your own risk. But now you may proceed. I just had to add that little thing in there. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's brutal, but if you're trying to grow your legs, you got to do what you got to do, right? So time under tension is huge. Um, hack squats, like make, making sure that the sled is moving at all times. You're not pausing and stopping to take a breath at the top. You're constantly going. You're constantly going. Um, another thing is eccentrics. Um, I do this a lot on um, like leg press. I'll do like explosive up and then three to four seconds eccentric down and you can literally feel your muscle fibers tearing as you're doing it. Um, and I think just a lot of growth comes from that. And it really just allows you to feel the mind muscle connection, um, a lot more than you would ordinarily if you're pausing or resting, um, in between reps and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't have said it better myself, but yeah, that's one thing that I think, you know, it's a lot of people use it and a lot of people don't, but it's it's one thing that I use too, and it, and it really does help. But a question that I asked everyone before this last New Year's Eve was, what is one body part when everyone's looking forward to training and growing the most as the new year approaches? And the answers were like arms, abs, back, shoulders, legs. I added a, a frowny face after legs, just so everyone knows. But um, arms won by like 10%. So I always ask our guests, so what does an arm day look like for you or arm workout look like for you? Because let's be honest, you're talking to a guy here and guys basically come communicate with their arms i mean that's i mean if, if language were to ever break down we would just flex on each other and just that's how we show dominance basically to each other but so arms for guys i mean is as an special especially you know meaning to us but what does an arm day look like for you yeah so ever since i've been working with justin i've been following a push pull legs split um before i was with him i was doing more so of a bro split and splitting it by muscle groups so that's when i would do a typical arm workout but currently, I do push pull legs. So I will do um, like heavy. So for a push day example, I would do bench, some sort of bench compound movement, um, and then accessory chest exercises. And then I would incorporate delts and triceps at the end just to um, incorporate arms in there as well. So I like the push pull legs personally. I feel like it's helped me grow a ton and I love the volume that comes from it. You're able to hit multiple muscle groups several times a week. Um, whereas if you were doing a specific muscle group a week, you would only get it maybe once or twice. Um, so I think push pull legs is far more beneficial in my opinion. Well, this is the part of the podcast that I mentioned that she has bench 205 before. So this is where we get like all these people logging off because they're like, oh, she's 20 years old. This is BS. I'm I'm logging off here. This is absolutely ridiculous. But I, I mentioned that at the end there so that not that many people get too, you know, depressed by that fact. And I saw that. And that's one of the reasons why I was like, OK, she's 20 years old. She needs to come on because this is just absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, push pull is one thing that I've I've done before. And it, it I I mean, I'm a, I'm a person that I'll try anything really as long as it as long as it, you know, as long as it suits me for a while or as long as it as long as it gets my attention really cuz i have i have a bad case of add so you know if i'm not focusing on it you know good luck which is why i ask how you guys have adjusted to this with college i would never have continued with college if it would be just online you could not pay me to focus on a laptop and get all this work done. So I was like, thank God I graduated at this time before, you know, most of this was online because yeah, I'm just one of those people where it's like, if I'm not into it, I'm not into it where it's like, good luck getting me to try. So yeah, it's, you know, the mental mind games that, that we do play, but you mentioned that you might be getting ready for a show in 2021. Have you decided what um, class you're going to do? If you're going to do figure physique, has there been any talk into what you think would work best for you? Yeah, so I'm definitely in the figure category. Um, I am working towards the X frame, and I just have to fill out my my frame. Um, because I am so tall, it is harder. Um, but yeah, so there's talks about potentially competing in May of 2021. Um, but also, I'm not sure if I'm ready to compete yet, because as most bodybuilders are, they're never content with what they look like. They're always wanting more. Um, so we'll see. Also, I'm kind of nervous about juggling it all with school. Um, the show would fall right around finals and I don't want to be foggy in the midst of my finals and I don't want to, I don't know. I don't, I just think it would be hard to juggle it all. So I might wait until I graduate college. Um, that would give me more time to grow as well. But honestly, I'm just trusting my coach. He knows what's best for me and, um, he's just really just looking out for me. So 
just trusting the process and seeing where we go. <laughs> I mean, you mentioning that you might get foggy brain during finals brings me back to a story. I had a guy that lived on my floor my freshman and sophomore year where he had a twin and the twin was smart in every single subject. So every final, his twin would go and take his tests for him. And so he would get like straight A's basically. And he'd do all the tests while the other twin would just basically just chill out with us and stuff. And I was like, you are the luckiest person on the planet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, that is the life hack of all life hacks there to get yourself a twin right there and then, and then just get him to do all the work for you. So yeah, that's, that, that brought me back to it. So that's a, but yeah, those, that, that mind, I mean, that's one thing that a lot of people don't get to is like, these people are not the sharpest people in the world once they're in that stage prep, because your mind is just shot where, I mean, I loved your prep brain stories, but yeah, it's just so many things, which is why I love having you on because you are before, you know, I usually get the after product of people who have already been through this a while. So now to have someone before that is just so great. But uh, two of the final questions that I love to ask everyone before we wrap things up here are, you know. Again, I say this with a grain of salt because if I so I always ask this question. So what would it what would you like to be at or where would you like to be at if we were to talk to you a year from today? But again, if I were to have asked you that last year and if you would have predicted a global pandemic and all this stuff that was happening, you know, I would bet my entire life savings against it. So again, I ask this question with a grain of salt, knowing fully well that there's no way that anything could be possible. I mean, we could talk next year and there could be flames in the background. You could hear gunshots in the background. Who knows with the way things are going, what, what this might turn out to be. But in an ideal world, if we were to talk to you a year from today, early November, where would you like to be at in your life? And what are some goals that you'd like to have achieved? Yeah, so I want to perform well academically. Um, above anything else, I am a college student, and I, hmm, let's see, I would love to have competed, but I'm also not rushing it at the same time. If it happens, it happens. Um, I'm not putting a time frame on it. Like I said, um, I would love to have written a cookbook slash like nutritional tips for college students, um, and I would love to just continue making a mark and impact on the fitness industry. Um, yeah, I think those are my main goals for the next year. Oh, and I wish you nothing but the best of that. And everyone go and give her a follow, like I said before. But I got to add another question now, because like you said, you're going to want to make a cookbook where if if I were to talk to any one of your friends and say, OK, what is the one food that Emery is most known for that she makes better than anything else? What would you say would be their answer? What do you think is your staple food that you think you do the best at? Ooh, okay. Honestly, I'm very simple when it comes to what I eat, but I make a mean, like, caprese chicken. I do, like, chicken breast, and I marinate in this balsamic vinegar, and I put mozzarella and tomatoes and basil on top, and it just, like, all simmers together it's so good oh my mouth is watering thinking about it <laughs> i should have never even asked that question because now she's going to be getting like marriage requests in the dms because people will be like oh she cooks that are you kidding me this is this is ridiculous i gotta hop on that so no but that that is that is so great and yeah i mean it's just it's so great that you're able to do that with nutrition as well because me if i was a foodie like that and i love to cook where i mean i'll make a mean mac and cheese and pb and j you know that's that's what i bring to the table really but the last question that i ask is you know, if you could change one thing about this lifestyle, what would be one thing that you would like to see change? Like I always say, if someone were to walk up to you and say, Emery, we made the decision you can change one thing about this health and fitness lifestyle and everyone would go along with it, what would you like to have personally change? Ooh, that's such a good question. I say, See, okay. I saved the million dollar questions for the end. Um, I, I just really wish that people would say, yes, I can. Um, before I go into each top set, I say a quick prayer um, and I say, yes, I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Um, and I really hope and pray for this industry that people will just believe that they can, um, that they will let their self-doubt um, and their fears just go away um, because you are truly capable of anything um, and you are blessed with the talents and the gifts that you heart that you have for a reason. Um, and I just hope that people can grow into who they're created to be um, in that aspect and just go after what they want and believe in themselves because they are capable and they can. Um, so I think that's one thing that I would change is just the mindset that the self limiting mindset and the victim mindset. Um, that's one thing that I would change. That's, that's definitely one thing too, where 
I mean, the, that first step that you take into the gym is the hardest step. But once you take that first step, I mean, it becomes so much easier to just keep going in there and, you know, keep making changes and really starting to, you know, see some results. So, yeah, that is one thing, too, as well, that I would just if I could shout that from the mountains or if I could shake everyone down and just say, hey, look, it's going to be hard at first, just like everything that is worthwhile in life is hard at first. But again. Disclaimer, if you are one of those genetic freaks that I hate more than life itself, screw you. I don't like you. You are, I mean, you could be the nicest person on the planet, and I still do not like you as a human being just because you have it easier than anyone else on the planet. I know there's a handful of you out there that are probably listening, and you know who you are, and, you know, I hope bad things happen to you. But, no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding, everyone. But, you know, it, it's, it just <laughs> proves, you know, that life isn't fair. And, you know, some people got it easier. I mean... If only I could be even, you know, like seven feet tall so I could just have gotten a basketball scholarship right off the bat like I know some of my friends did. I mean, but that just that just goes along with everything. But before we wrap things up, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, um, I would like to give a shout out to Alexa Snyder, my best friend and training partner. Who I will be se- who I will be sending a message to and hopefully getting her on the podcast after this. Yes, yes, you will. She is the most incredible person I've ever met. She has more grit and passion than anyone I've ever met. Um, she's one week out from the Ronnie Coleman classic. So send her good vibes. She's going to kill it. She looks amazing. She's in figure. Um, so I will be doing a live stream. We have a joint Instagram page and I will give you the contact information for that. So you can link it. Um, so I'll be live streaming that. So I want to give a big shout out to her. Um, also to my coach, Justin Mahaley, because I wouldn't be here without him, his guidance and support along the way. Um, I'm just so incredibly blessed to know the people that I know and to live where I live. Um, and I'm just so blessed to be where I am today. Yeah. Now, please tell me that you're going to like put like a donut on a string and like force her, like come out of her house or that like that, or just be like, be like, come on, come on, come on. We need you. But that's, that's just pure torture. But yeah, that really, that last week, it's like, don't these people go through enough already? But then the, just to see that, I mean, that is what really won me over to the sport is just seeing that dedication because let's be honest, this is not a sport where you're going to make a lot of money. Even if you're like the number one bodybuilder on the planet, you're going to have to find some other ways to make income. It's not like any other sport where, I mean, the the the, the best people offer, you know, set for life. But that's that, I mean, there's so many things that inspire me with this lifestyle. And that number one is that just the dedication that it requires and the low return that it gets when it comes to, you know, like fame and fortune and stuff. You're, you're not going to really get that much as a bodybuilder. So it just makes it even more worthwhile. And, you know, secondly is that you're only on stage for a couple of minutes at most when other, every other athlete, you know, you're on, like for me, I'm on the mountain for like three hours, like 20 times a year, basically. So it's, it, it just shows that drive. So that's why I love having bodybuilders come on. But yeah, again, Emery, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the podcast and sharing your journey. I mean, I really, really appreciate it. And everyone, go and give her a link to all of her stuff down below. Again, you guys, I have to mention this. She is just 20 years old, for God's sake. She is the second youngest person that we've ever had on this podcast. I had one who was a girl that was still in high school, and that was the most embarrassing thing in my entire life because I was like, what? what is this? You're like 17 years old. Like This is just absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, everyone, go and give her a follow. But lastly, I love to ask this at the very end is, do you have any... um? like PRs that you're looking forward to getting soon or for any lifts that you're really working to try hard for? Or are you just basically going for adding on size now? Yeah. So I used to have the kind of like powerlifting mindset, uh, but my body was just taking a beating. And like I said, I haven't squatted or deadlifted in probably three months at this point. Um, but before I kind of transitioned into the whole, like I'm just going for growth right now. But my goals were to get a 365 deadlift, a 315 squat, and a 225 bench. Um, Kind of put on the back burner for now because of injuries, but those are my goals. I mean, if she if if she's in the sport six years from now and has done it consistently, it's like when she's my age now, good God, I don't even want to know what that's going to look like. That's going to be too insane for me. But I, I mean, yeah, this is just it's just so inspiring to have someone of your age that has that dedication, and that commitment. And we wish you nothing but the best in this sport. And I'm willing to, you know, help you out on all of your ventures that you have. But again, most importantly, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much again for having me. It was so fun. Absolutely. Well, again, you guys, go and give her a follow. I'll leave a link down below. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.